Let's pray. Okay. Our Father God, which art in heaven, we invite your presence in our midst at this time. We are gathered together once again to study your word. I pray that you would be in our midst. This <laughs> is the promise that you would be in our midst as we come together to study. We pray that Jesus may be lifted up to the honor and glory of your majesty, your name, we want to glorify. Help us now to be able to understand, and to digest, and to comprehend your word and to impart what we learn to others. In Jesus' name, amen. As we are continuing to look at this uh, great study on the 144,000, and uh, this study once again, is going to focus more so around the 144,000. As Revelation chapter 14 begins by telling us to worship the Father, to worship the true God, rather. And also in Revelation chapter 13, we see a counterfeit of uh, worship. Chapter 13, counterfeit worship. Chapter 14, uh, the worship of uh, the true God. Let's begin by going to the book of Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, and the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 13, speaking of the second beast. Let's begin in verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell or which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now the question we would like to ask is, how is the second beast, which is none other than United States of America or apostate Protestantism, how is the second beast, how will these apostate churches cause the earth to worship the first beast? What was one of the signs? Notice verse three, 13. And he doeth great wonders. That's one of the deceptions there. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Let's pause there for a moment. He maketh fire to come down. That's part of the great wonders, false revival. Now, what was the sign that Elijah asked the uh, prophets of Baal in that contest on uh, Mount, what was the name of the mount again? Sinai? Not Sinai. Oh, Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel, that's right. On Mount Carmel, what was the sign that Elijah asked? How we will know, how we will differ differentiate between uh, the true God, the God that answers by, uh, by fire. It was this sign that would uh, explain, that would convince the people that this is the true God. Because at that moment, go to the book of 1 Kings with me, 1 Kings chapter 18. We'll come back to Revelation chapter 13. But 1 Kings chapter 18, we find the account of Elijah and the prophet of Baal. And this will be part of the study here. Which God are we going to worship? Revelation 13, the counterfeit worship, the counterfeit God. Revelation 14 speaks of the true and living God. Eli 1 Kings chapter 18, we're going to. And the contest on Mount Carmel. And the Bible tells us that Elijah, in verse 21, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold he between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. As we discussed before, this uh, startling statement there, that the people answered Elijah not a word, means the people could not make a, dif a, a difference between Baal and Jehovah. 
at that moment, the people were so deep into spiritualism that they could not understand or see the difference between the true God and Baal. So they answered Elijah not a word. Again, what was the contest about? Elijah said to the prophet of Baal, verse 25, And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods. But put no fire under and they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon saying oh Baal hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon the altar which was made so Elijah said put no fire under the altar that they were supposed to build. Why? Because Elijah had said to them, back to verse 24, he said to them, Call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, Jehovah, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. So and let's go back now to chapter 13 of the Revelation. What would be the counterfeit in these last days? Because the prophets of Baal could not, or their God could not answer by fire. Jehovah answered by fire, as we continue to read in chapter 18 of 1 Kings. Now, in the last days, the Bible tells us that Satan will introduce in a counterfeit by... Uh, Doing what again? According to chapter 13, verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth on the si in the sight of men. Now that spiritualism that the Bible is referring to, make a fire to come down from heaven. When uh, Satan introduced a counterfeit based on what God has done, we are dealing with spiritualism. We are dealing with uh, wickedness. We are dealing with uh, evil spirits doing uh, miracles. As uh, the Bible also tells us in chapter 16 uh, of the Revelation. We'll look at that in a moment. Now go to chapter 14 with me. Now this is how the second beast. Uh, well let's read verse 14 as well of chapter 13. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of, there it is again, those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Notice the expression there. The, he's performing, doing these great wonders and uh, miracles in the sight of the beast. Not uh, for God. Not doing these things or leading others to God. He's uh, leading all this, uh, these are pastor churches there are leading people to worship the beast and the beast works and worship Satan. In other words, they are worshiping Satan. So the Bible tells us the contrast there is in chapter 14 of the Revelation. Now verses 1 through 5 as we have been dealing with, which deal, which talked about the 144,000 and verses 6 through 14 Describe the message that they will be proclaiming in these last days, right before probation closes. This is the message for this time, the three angels' messages. But the first message of uh, Revelation 14, uh, verse, verses 6 and 7, is the worship to, is the call rather, is the message to worship the true and living God. Verse 7 tells us, Verse 6 speaks of the everlasting gospel that needs to go to uh, the whole world. Verse 7, notice, then verse 7 tells us of Revelation 14, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. And what? And uh, worship him and him alone that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now, again, uh, verses 6 through 14 deals with the three angels messages the message that God has for us 
to proclaim in these last days. But in chapter 16 of the Revelation, we find the counterfeit three angels' messages. The Bible tells us, once again, verse 12 of chapter 16, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, counterfeit three angels' message there, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the water, the spirits of devils, working miracles. Again, the expressions, the spirits of devils, working miracles, is dealing with spiritualism. Then it says, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now, here's what we want to look at here. Verse 15 tells us, when we see these uh, counterfeit miracles, these signs uh, and wonders, when we see the, these uh, entities come, come together in spiritualism, working miracles, what must we do? Well, the Bible tells us, look up for your redemption draweth now. That's what verse 15 tells us. Behold, I come as a thief, Christ says. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So, as we are about to discover, spiritualism is uh, growing so rapidly right now, working miracles and uh, signs and wonders, uh, false fire or false revival are happening everywhere. Notice with me on the screen uh, what this says here. This is uh, from uh, Science of the Times, uh, May 28, 1894, paragraph 7. For years, uh, spiritualism has been growing in strength and gaining in popularity by advocating a certain kind of faith in Christ. Let's pause. Notice, spiritualism is uh, advocating a certain kind of faith in Christ. They are not denying Christ publicly, but it is a different movement. It, it is not Christianity. Back to the screen. And thus, many Protestants are becoming infatuated with this mystery of what? Of iniquity. Keep those words in mind. Mystery of what again? Of iniquity. Where have we read something like this? This is about Babylon. The Bible called Babylon in chapter 17 of the Revelation. Go there with me. Chapter 17 of the Revelation, beginning in verse 4, and the woman was arrayed, that's the Catholic Church, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So spiritualism is part of the teaching of Babylon. So therefore, we cannot as a Christian be part, we need to be aware or be part of uh, this movement, we need to be aware of the counterfeit. How do we know? How can we recognize the counterfeit? Well, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to these words, it's because uh, there is no light in them. In other words, we must check to see what the Bible says versus what Babylon is teaching and what we are hearing, what the movement, this counterfeit movement, this fire and great revival, that's how we're going to know, by studying the Word of God, which are able to make us wise unto salvation. So, mystery Babylon. And the Bible also tells us that the woman has daughters, Verse 5 again says that 
she is the mother of harlots. Her daughters are the ones, back in chapter 13, that we read about here, beginning in verse 11, and uh, all the way down uh, to verse 14 that we read a moment ago. These are her daughters. Our past Protestantism, as uh, one more time we read, uh, verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them, verse 14, uh, that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he have power to do in the sight of the beast. Whatever movement we see taking place right now, these false revivals like the sand with uh, Lou Engel and many others, these are movements to resurrect, to give life to the image of the beast, to the beast that received this uh, deadly wound. Back to the screen. Notice with me what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Great Controversy 382-383. Babylon is said to be the mother of harlots. By her daughters must be symbolized churches that cling to her doctrines and her tradition and follow her example of sacrificing what? Notice carefully. How are they following her example? By sacrificing the truth and the approval of God in order to form an unlawful alliance with the world. So the daughters, the Protestants, so-called, that came out of Babylon, now are going back to Babylon. How? You cannot go back to Babylon. You cannot have association with Babylon without sacrificing the truth. This is exactly what Great Controversy just tells us here. One more time, let's read that. It says, by her daughters must be symbolized churches that cling to her doctrines and traditions and follow her example of sacrificing the truth and the approval of, of God. Go back with me to your Bible. Notice in Revelation chapter 14, the second angel's message, which is in verse 8. Again, the Bible tells us, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen is fallen, that great city, because she had made what? All nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Same call in Revelation chapter 18, as we looked at before. Verses 1 through 4, it tells us that same thing, that Babylon is fallen, verse, verse 2, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. She had made all the nation drunk of the wine of her fornication. Has uh, all other churches drunk by the teachings? Remember, they have sacrificed the truth. And if they have sacrificed the truth of God, that means they have adapted the teachings, the wine of Babylon. Have they been made drunk by the wine of Babylon? Yes, brothers and sisters, notice on the screen here what this says. It says here, beer at church. That's a question mark there. What you need to know about the latest congregational trend. February 25th, 2019 from Charisma News. Notice, Martin Luther, the famous 16th century rebel monk and Protestant reformer, is known to have had a penchant for a palatable pint of beer. He even once exclaimed, whoever drinks beer, he is a, he is quick to sleep. Whoever sleeps long does not sin. Whoever does not sin enters heaven. Thus, let us drink beer. Now, the question that we want to ask, or questions that we want to ask, are we living in the 16th century? as Martin Luther, Martin Luther was. No, we are not living in the 16th century. Now, another question is, did Martin Luther receive all the light? No, he only received a little bit of the light, just like uh, us receive a little bit of light and uh, many others with, of the reformers. Now, just because Martin Luther thought and believed that there was nothing wrong with uh, 
drinking alcoholic beverages, does that mean we should be doing the same right now? No. Because to whom much is given, what is it? Much is required. We have been given more understanding than Martin Luther. Martin Luther was ignorant of the fact that uh, alcohol beverages was bad for his health. He was ignorant of uh, that fact. Again, uh, Acts 17, verse 30, the Bible says, uh, In times of ignorance, God winks at, but now call all men to repentance. In times of ignorance, if we were ignorant of these things, God will not hold these uh, against us or hold us accountable. But now, because more light has been revealed unto us, He calls all men to repentance. We have no excuses. So these churches have been made drunk by the wine of Babylon. Now let's go to the sand movement that just took place in Orlando, Florida, not too long ago. Notice on the screen with me. This is from the Christian Post, February 28, 2019. It says, 60,000 Christians gather in Orlando for what kind of movement? For Jesus' movement of this generation. Notice with me this video on the screen. Now, this movement that is taking place right now and is growing as uh, we just read, 16,000 Christians gather there for the mo movement or the Jesus movement. And it's rapidly growing and growing. This is uh, a movement whereas you uh, don't have to worry about the commandments of God. Just come, do whatever you want to to, to do, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Now, many people are being deceived, as you saw in that crowd there. They are being deceived. This is the reason why we need to expose this. We need to show them from the Bible. We need to go out with the book, Great Controversy, and, and show them what's happening. Show them the deception of the enemy. Notice with me, back to the screen, another article here from WND. February 25th, 2019, 60,000 radical evangelizers for Jesus. Notice, most of the attendees of the sand viewed the celebration, convocation, as the beginning of a new launching forth into highways and byways to reach multitudes surrounding us in need. Many are participating in a 40, what is it? In a 40-day that begins March 1st with the appeal 
to God for what? For another Jesus movement in our day. Notice how serious, how devoted they are. A 40-day fast. It's time for another experience on Mount Carmel again with uh, the prophet of Baal. Remember, Elijah brought up the people who were confused, who could not make uh, a difference between Baal and the true God. And Elijah brought them up and the prophet of Baal to witness this uh, manifestation of God's power of who was the true God. This is our duty in these last days. No matter what may come our way, we need to enlighten the eyes of those who are perishing in the darkness at this time. Notice the next video with me on the screen. Back again to Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the, what's the first one? Of the dragon, which represents Satan and the world. Then it says, and out of the mouth of the beast, that would be the, the papacy. Then it says, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, that would be apostate Protestantism. That would be a spiritual or spiritualism movement taking place. Notice, back to the screen again. Notice once again. All the miracles, all the signs, all the wonders that he performed when he walked this earth did not change one heart. Why? The Holy Ghost was not here yet. You have to understand. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power. Everything Jesus did was might and power. But the Bible says, it's not by might, it's not by power. It's by my spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can change the hearts of men. Only the Holy Spirit can change your life today. And all you need to do is begin to acknowledge, please listen to me, I beg you. Begin to acknowledge Him in your presence on a daily basis. Now lift your hands and welcome the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, lift your voices and call upon His holy name right now, everywhere. Now listen, I want you to join hands together right now. Come on, quickly, quickly. And lift your hands, begin to pray in tongues real loud, real loud, real loud, real loud, real loud, real loud, real loud. Real loud. Loud, 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 everything in the organ. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Big fight, big fight, big fight, big fight, big fight. Now listen, listen, listen. Join hands quickly, all of you, all of you, all of you. Join hands, join hands. Join hands quickly, right there in front of me. Join hands, all of you. Are you ready for the fight to fall right now? All right, all right. Join hands and lift your hands up high. Come on. Join hands. Lift your hands up high. When I say three, you cry fire. And when you say fire, it will come upon you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two.
Now, what we just watch here, this is exactly what the prophet of Baal attempted to do. But did the fire come down when those prophets of Baals were chanting and doing whatever they were, they were doing, cutting themselves? Did Baal answer by fire? No, brothers and sisters. But did God answer by fire? Yes. So therefore, we must have another Mount Carmel experience in these last days to counterfeit the, or to counteract rather, to counteract these false revivals that are taking place. Notice on the screen, it says here from uh, Signs of the Times, May 28, 1894, the signs and wonders of spiritualism will become more and more pronounced as the professed Christian world rejects the plainly revealed truth of the Word of God and refuses to be guided by a plain dust saith the Lord, accepting instead the doctrines and the commandments of man through rejecting, what again, light and truth. And many are deciding their destiny for eternal death, and as men reject truth, the Spirit of God will gradually withdraw itself from the earth, and the prince of this earth will have more and more control over his subjects. He will show great signs and wonders as credentials of his divine claims, and through spiritualism will work against Christ and his agencies. That is exactly the movement we see taking place right now. Notice, back to the screen again. It says here from uh, volume 2 of uh, Selected Messages, page 50, if those through whom cues are performed are disposed on account of these manifestations to excuse their neglect of what again? Of the law of God and continue in disobedience Though they have power to any and every extent, it does not follow that they have the great power of God. On the contrary, it is the miracle working power of the who? Of the great deceiver. He is a transgressor of the moral law and employs every device that he can master to blind man to its true character. We are warned that in the last days he will work with signs and lying wonders, and he will continue these wonders until the when the close of probation, that he may point to them as evidence that he is an angel of light and not of darkness. So this will continue to take place, to happen and intensify till when? Till the close of of probation and as we were told through the through the the two great errors the immortality of the soul and Sunday secretness Satan will deceive the whole world and uh, the immortality of the soul is, sp is spiritualism and a Sunday secretness is the counterfeit Sabbath which uh, the Bible told uh, f told us about or warned us about in uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11, to avoid. And those who receive the mark of the beast will receive the wrath of God. And this is why we were told that the Sunday issue, the mark of the beast issue, will be one of the great tests for Seventh-day Adventists. What was the other one? Spiritualism is the other test for Seventh-day Adventists. Notice on the screen, it says here, We need not be deceived. Wonderful scenes with which Satan will be closely connected will soon take place. God's Word declares that Satan will work miracles. He will make people sick and then will suddenly remove from them his satanic power. They will then be regarded as healed. These works of apparent healing, notice carefully, will bring Seventh-day Adventists to what? To the test. Spiritualism, Sunday sacredness, or the mark of the beast, will bring Seventh-day Adventists to the test. Now, which Seventh-day Adventists will be tested? Is it the organization? 
or is it the remnant as the bible refers to in revelation chapter 12 verse 17 there's the organization and then there's the remnant as it was then so will it be in the last days as it was in the days of christ there was the organization then there was christ and the disciples why am i asking these questions because the organization is already part of the apostate protestantism that are following spiritualism by the organization i'm talking about the general conference of seven day adventists notice with me on the screen it says here from Adventist Healthcare and you. This is a screenshot of uh, this article here that came out February 27, 2019. It says, mindfulness, spirituality, and your heart. Hmm. Let's pause. Mindfulness and what else? Spirituality and your heart. Let's find out what that means. Next slide here tells us more it says nurse rosa melendez rn tells us how you can use mindfulness to stay heart healthy rose melendez is the head of the emergency department and nursing administration where at adventist healthcare washington adventist hospital now this lady is not just a regular nurse she is once again the head of the emergency department or in a nursing administration at adventist healthcare washington adventist hospital what is she promoting the health message that has been given to us which is also part of the first angel's message is that what she's promoting at our hospital or is she promoting spiritualism which is another form of spiritualism notice it says here back to the screen what does uh, mindfulness mean she answers mindfulness refers to paying attention to moment by moment experiences and uh, what are the words there silencing your mind by focusing on one repetitive thought or task this could include mindfulness meditation prayer moving meditations like yoga or what else tai chi or repetitive movement exercises like riding a bike swimming laps or walking do you see it brothers and sisters yoga tai chi we covered this before who's behind yoga tai chi that is satan these are spiritualism in disguise being taught being administered at our hospital listen to her explaining this notice it's love your heart month and our good friend nurse rose is here with some heart healthy tips and rose and jerry you know when we think about having a heart that's healthy we don't connect it usually to our spiritual lives that's right, right? That's right yeah so i love that we're also bringing this up how how do the two relate actually a number of studies shown that mindfulness can improve your heart health you know it helps to reduce stress anxiety and it gives you hope at times that are difficult so let's break down the whole mindfulness thing that sounds good but i don't know exactly what that means what kind of mindfulness activities can you recommend rose i would say like spending time reading your bible praying meditating some of the things they recommended is you want to sit in a quiet room you just want to close your eyes relax think of something pleasant and then just repeat it out loud several times in the meantime you're also moving your shoulders relaxing your head and just repetitive motion like that you want to start maybe two or three minutes at a time and then you can increase that mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense because we very much live in a culture where we never slow down it's mm -hmm. go 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 hey, if you want more heart healthy tips check out our website at wgts919.com you can also go there to take the heart healthy risk assessment thanks to rose for stopping by she's got more than 25 years of nursing experience and she's the director of the emergency department and nursing administration at washington Adventist hospital i want to say thank you to Adventist healthcare for their support Brothers and sisters, this is the God of Ekron that they have introduced at our hospital. They're not leading patients. They're not leading people to Jesus Christ. Like she has that opportunity at that radio station to talk about Jesus, the health message that has been given us. But she's talking about mindfulness, yoga, tai chi, 
which is uh, spiritualism. Notice, back to the screen. Uh, it says, uh, how can uh, someone who has never meditated start a routine? She answers, try this mindfulness meditation at home or in the office. First, sit quietly and close your eyes. Breathe slowly. Second, relax all of your muscles, beginning with your feet, legs and thighs. Third, shrug your shoulders and roll your neck to the left and then right. Fourth, with each exhale, say a word or phrase out loud or to yourself. Fifth, when uh, your, notice carefully, when uh, your thoughts, or fourth rather, when your thoughts simply go back to repeating the, pa the pattern and focus on your breath. Fifth, start with repeating this for two minutes and work up to 10 minutes. Question for you now. Put your thinking cap on. Where is Jesus in all this? Where is the Bible in all this? Empty your mind or silencing your mind, as she puts it before, is what? By the time you do all of these, what she has said, you are demon possessed. That spiritualism. Go to the book of Isaiah with me. Isaiah, will God accept this? Again, this is the organization, not the remnant. Notice in Isaiah chapter 2, in the book of Isaiah with me, notice carefully. Isaiah chapter 2, and uh, let's begin uh, in verse 1 of the book uh, of Isaiah chapter 2. Are you heading there or are you there? Isaiah chapter 2 with me. It is spiritualism being taught there. Should we continue to support the organization? Jesus did not continue to support them. The disciples did not do that. Chapter 2. Isaiah verse 1, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and who else? Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come he and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of what? Zion shall go forth the what? What would come, what should come out of Zion? The law. But this movement of spiritualism is about getting rid of God's law. Notice, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, verse 4, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into prunic hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Notice, skip on down to verse 6. Therefore, thou hast forsaken, notice carefully, thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the, from where? The east and are soothsayers like the Philistines and that they please themselves in the children of strangers. What was happening uh, to God's people here? They had uh, adapted the custom, the re religion of the east, which is spiritualism, that they have adapted this. Oh, there. Isn't that what we have adapted as well? What we are teaching at Andrews University right now? Tai Chi? And uh, at our hospital? Yoga? Mindfulness? Notice, back to the screen. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Volume 5 of the Testimony, page 75, uh, paragraph 3. I have been shown that the spirit of the world is fast leavening the church. You are following the same path as did who? Ancient Israel. There is the same, what's the word? Falling away from your holy calling as God's peculiar people. Let's pause. So the organization is following what? The same path of ancient Israel. What happened to ancient Israel? Because of that path they were following. They fell. Probation was closed for them. What's happening to the organization today? They have fallen away from truth. Back to the screen. 
Again, she says, you are having fellowship with who? With the unfruitful works of darkness. Your concord with unbelievers has provoked what? The Lord's displeasure. You know not the things that belong to your peace, and they are fast being hid from your eyes. Your neglect to follow the light will place you in a, carefully notice, in a more unfavorable position than the Jews upon whom Christ pronounced a ho, a woe. Why? Why did she say it? a more unfavorable position than the Jews? Well, again, to him much is given, much is required. We have been given more light than the Jews who rejected Christ and who crucified Christ. We are be, we crucifying Christ afresh. Notice, it gets even worse. Back to the screen. It says here, Is winter weather affecting your mood? What's the answer? Notice, some people may experience what is known as seasonal affective disorder, S-A-D, we can say SAD, which is a depressive disorder that is associated with the fall and winter seasons. Notice, Adventist Healthcare, Shady Grove, Medical Centers, psych Psychiatrists, Bindu Kashi, MD, says it's important to recognize sad symptoms and learn to manage symptoms before they become more severe and uh, have a long-term impact on your life. It goes on to say, Dr. Kashi's tips to help prevent and manage sad. Number one, get plenty of rest, exercise regularly, eat healthy meals, practice stress management techniques, and what else? Such as mindful meditation yoga. Participate in activities you enjoy. Try to get out and social, socialize even when you don't feel up to it. What must you do if you feel depressed? What must you do if you feel sad, if you're going through this mood during this uh, time of the year? Go to the Bible. Go to Jesus. Go to the spirit of prophecy. Is that what it says? No. Empty your mind. Practice mindful meditation yoga. Again, as I mentioned a moment ago, which God, our hospitals now, which counsel or where they are getting their counsel? From which God? It is none other than the God of Ekrans. Notice with me, go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 14. Where are we heading to? Ezekiel chapter 14. Notice what the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 14. Notice what the Bible says. Chapter 14 of the book of Ezekiel, verse 12. The Bible says, The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it, and will do what? Break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off men and beasts from it. Though these, notice carefully, these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. The question I want to ask here, can the church sa save us? If Another question. If we continue to follow the organization, the General Conference of Seven Adventists, in spite of the apostasy, will we enter heaven? No. The Bible says, though these three men, who are they again? Noah, Daniel, and Job were in the land. They, should, they would, could only deliver themselves by their right, righteousness. No one can save you. Following the organization cannot save you. It is only the truth. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only one who can save you. His righteousness that we need to cover us. Notice, go to the book of Deuteronomy with me, chapter 31 this time. Book of Deuteronomy. Notice what the word of God says in Deuteronomy chapter 31. This is very important. Spiritualism is one of the two final tests for Seventh-day Adventists. 
chapter 31 of the book of Deuteronomy. The Bible says, let's look at verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of a cloud. And the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after what? After the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. What would the Lord do if uh, the people were to do something like that, which they did? What would he do? Verse 17, Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will do what? Forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, and that these evils come upon us. Why? Because our God is what? Is not among us. If you are following after other gods, spiritualism, God will not be in the midst. When God removes his spirit, destruction comes upon Jerusalem. Likewise, destruction is coming for this organization. It's time. We are Seventh-day Adventists. The, it's not the organization, the General Conference, that makes us Seventh-day Adventists. It's time to leave and stop supporting the organization. The General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists are not telling people to leave the Seventh-day Adventist church faith. That's not what I'm asking. That's not what I'm telling. I'm saying these men that have hijacked the Seventh-day Adventist church, in leadership position of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, we can no longer support them. The evidences are clear. Which God are we going to follow? Ekron, Baal, or Jehovah? This is why Joshua says, As for me, I don't know what you are going to do, but as for me and my house, we will serve who? The Lord, Jehovah. Again, he gets even worse than what we just so, back to the screen. Notice with me what it says there. Laughter what? Yoga for what? For your health. Laughter yoga, again, this is from Washington Adventist Hospital. Laughter yoga combines unconditional laughter with yogi breathing, pranarama, and anyone can laugh for no reason without relying on humor, jokes, or comedy. Laughter is simulated as a body exercise in a group with eye contact and childlike playfulness. It soon turns into real and contagious laughter. The concept of laughter yoga is based on a scientific fact that the body cannot differentiate between fake and real laughter. One gets the same physiological and psychological benefits. Now, Again, where are they getting these information? Which book are they reading from? Do you see how Spirit of Prophecy, as she had prophesied that this was going to happen, that this new organization will be formed, and that books of new orders will be written, and that even her writings, they will attack and promote other books. Or the teachings. This is what we see happening. Again, where did they get this idea from? Notice the following video with me.
Laughter really is the best medicine. This week's Staying Well looks at laughter yoga classes where people who take this class say it reduces stress and relieves pain. Watch. In laughter yoga, we come together in a group and we generate laughter as a form of exercise. We make eye contact with other people and engage in playful exercises. Very good, very good, yay! It's called laughter yoga because of the diaphragmatic <laughs> breathing that takes place. When we laugh, it's, it's a full inhalation and a full exhalation. Laughing is good exercise. You feel it from the bottom of your diaphragm up. It really lifted my spirits in ways that I had not anticipated. Ooh. <laughs> it feels good to laugh because you get a change in the uptake of the naturally circulating endorphins and those are the body's painkillers and you actually get a measurable increase in your ability to tolerate pain. Laughter yoga definitely helps me to manage stress better. I'm more open to solutions coming to me because I'm in this relaxed space. Over a longer time scale you get a decrease in cortisol and cortisol is a stress hormone. When you laugh, you feel better, you're more relaxed, and you become less stressed. Breathe in, stretch up. I do think laughter is the best medicine. Science shows us it is, and I've experienced it in my own life. <laughs> Where did they get this from? The Hindus? Yoga? Kundalini, as you see on the screen? Holy laughter? Yoga? Kundalini. Who is that again? Who is the Kundalini? That's none other than the devil that they are worshipping. Again, they are following not Jehovah. They are following the God of Ekron. Go to the book of 2 Kings with me. 2 Kings chapter 1. Notice what the Bible says. In 2 Kings chapter 1 beginning in verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 1 verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab and Isaiah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick and he sent messengers and said unto them go and cry of Jehovah is that what it says no go and cry of Baal Zabab the God of Akron whether I shall recover of this disease that's exactly what we see taking place right now they are inquiring of uh, the God of Akron of Baal Zabab instead of uh, Jehovah instead of uplifting the right arm of the gospel which is the health message this is what they are teaching notice verse 3 but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Chishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it uh, not because there is no, not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Akron? Now therefore, notice carefully, Thus saith the Lord, that shall not come, up, come down from thy bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. Now, the phrase, the expression that Elijah departed symbolizes the Holy Spirit as well. Departed. What would happen? You shall surely die. You will not come up or come down from thy bed. This is what's happening. This is uh, the uh, typology here applies to the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thou shalt die in thy bed. Thou shalt not come down. And Elijah departed. Meaning, symbolizes the Spirit of God has departed from them. Like what happened to Saul when he went to the witch of Endor. What happened there? Even prior to that, the Spirit of God has already departed from them. But when he went to the witch of Endor, spiritualism and choir of the dead... Then he died a few hours later, the following day. That's what happened to Isaiah the, here. That's what's happening to this organization. Then the plague of God will fall upon the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. So therefore, we must come out of it. 
Brothers and sisters, God is about to send the angel of death. He's about to send his angel as well to put the seal upon the faithful few. As Revelation says, here is the patience of the saints. Chapter 14, verse 12. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And they are the same ones that Ezekiel described in uh, Ezekiel chapter 9 that are crying and sighing for the abomination that are being done in the land, in the denomination. These are the 144,000 as well. Notice on the screen what it says there. The Bible tells us here, if the church of God becomes what? Lukewarm. It does not stand in favor with God any more than do the churches that are, notice carefully, represented as having fallen and become what? The habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Pause there. Where did we read this? This was uh, in Revelation. This was chapter 18 describing Babylon. So now she says she's applying the same characteristics of Babylon there to the church in the last days that have uh, fallen away from the truth and adapted spiritualism. She says they will be the church. The organization will be in the same category as the fallen churches. Again, as we mentioned last time in our last study, we see a picture of the 144,000 standing with the Lamb. They are standing versus uh, the ones that are falling. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Revelation 14, verse 8. Revelation 18, verse 1 and through 4. Babylon is fallen. The daughters are falling as well. The Seventh-day Adventist General Conference is falling as well. Back to the screen. Notice, it goes on to say, those who have had opportunities to hear and receive, notice, the truth, and uh, who have united with the what? Seventh-day Adventist Church, calling themselves the commandment-keeping people of God, and uh, yet possess no more vitality and consecration to God than do the nominal churches. Will do what? Will receive of the plagues of God just as verily as the churches who does what? Oppose the law of God. Thou shall not come down from thy bed. Thou shall die. And Elijah departed. The Spirit of God has departed. Ichabod. The Spirit has departed Ezekiel. Chapter 14 we're going to. Notice with me. Go to the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 14. Notice what the Word of God says in the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 14. Beginning in verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 12. The Bible tells us here. Notice verse 12. And uh, the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. He shall cover his face and he see not the ground with his eyes. My net also will I spread upon him and he shall be taken in my snare. And I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans. Yet shall he not see it. Though he shall die there, and I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him and all his band, and I will draw out the sword after them, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. But I will, notice carefully, I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence that they may declare all their abominations among the hidden, whither they come, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The Lord will preserve a faithful few among Seventh-day Adventists. That's another thing. There are many out there that are saying that they are the remnant. There's nowhere in the Bible where, or spirit of prophecy where he says that the remnant is another organization. The remnant will come out 
or will be within or is within the Seventh-day Adventist church. Notice, let's continue. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, eat thy bread with quaking and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness and say unto the people of the land, Thus saith the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel, they shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein and the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste and the land shall be desolate and ye shall know that I am the Lord. The Lord must do the same thing to this organization so that a faithful few can stand out so that many will know that he is the Lord. Back to the screen. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Volume 2 of the Testimony, page 441. Like ancient Israel, the church has dishonored her God by departing from the light, neglecting her duties, and abusing her high and exalted privilege of being peculiar and holy in character. Her members have violated their covenant to live for God and Him alone only. They have joined with the selfish and world-loving pride. The, the love of pleasure and sin have been cherished. And uh, notice again, Christ has departed. His spirit has been cringed in the church. If Christ has departed, if His spirit has been quenched, why should uh, we continue to support the organization? Out of the, this great apostasy, there must be a faithful few standing up within uh, that church and make a stand uh, and uh, no longer support uh, this movement. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, quench not the Spirit of God because... Notice as we close, Ephesians chapter 4 gives us the answer, the because answer. Ephesians chapter 4, again, keep in mind, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 says, Quench not the Spirit, quench not the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Ephesians chapter 4 gives us the answer, the, the why question, the answer for the why question. Notice chapter 4, and the Bible says, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. What must we do, brothers and sisters? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Who seals us? We are sealed with or by the Spirit of, of God. That's part of the seal in these last days. The law of God, we find the seal within it. But it is the Spirit that convicts us of sin. So right now, if we have bitterness, anything that we have in our heart towards someone, it's time to let go of these things. It's time to surrender all to Jesus and follow the Lamb who, as He was being mistreated, like the Bible says, when He was reviled, He reviled not, but He continued to stand up for the truth. Notice, what else? It tells us, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If we want to be part of uh, the 144,000, these are the attributes which are the attributes of Christ that we must have. We must cry aloud and spare not. But at the same time, we, as the Bible tells us, we must be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Let's pray. Loving Father, which art in heaven, as we just looked at from your word just a little bit, we can see how the enemy is busy working. Deceptions is, are all over the place. Lord, only by a constant communion 
a relationship with you through prayer, fasting, and studying your word. We can be saved and not be deceived by the snares, by the teachings of Babylon and the enemy. Lord, help us now to take this matter seriously and help us also to see souls that are being deceived out there and use the resources, the talents, the gifts that you have given us to help these souls from the wrath to come, from being deceived by the enemy. Forgive us, Lord, of our trespasses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.